What's up? I am Zerus, and I'm here with Mr. Andre Hengchua, a.k.a. Gretorp. What's up? Post-IEM interview. How's it going? How are you feeling? IEM, MLG. Oh, wow. Post-MLG interview. <laughs> uh, I'm feeling. You're feeling? I'm feeling. That's the best description right now. <laughs> <laughs> Alright, tell me a little bit about your experience. Because I know this, like TT1, this is pretty much your first big LAN event. Yeah, I mean, for StarCraft 2, yeah, it, it's really set in for me. Um, what can I say? Uh, luckily, I don't have nerves like TT1. This guy was, like, bugging out, like, 24-7. But uh, I didn't really get nerves. There was a lot of, uh, one time where I just completely lost control of, like, I was overwhelmed with the game and then I played poorly but other than that I mean the LAN itself didn't really affect me in terms of like how much attention it was getting and and how many people were showing up and how many people were watching so that wasn't a huge issue uh, but in and of itself the entire LAN was was quite good I mean everything was run pretty smoothly the, the management was really good uh, yeah, the, like the logistics, everything went very smoothly, so I was really happy with that. What about the keyboard issue? Keyboard issue did suck. Um, I mean, you're not training on your your own keyboard, and it's definitely going to mess up your game. Uh, the, the first, was it? I think it was against. No, no, no. Our first match, you were using the keyboard. Yeah, yeah. The, there was a couple matches that I wasn't using my keyboard. I think I might not have been using. My I think it was versus Mask. You used uh, the Logitech yeah, one. Yeah, I used the Logitech against Mask because I know we didn't have a converter, and I didn't want to keep delaying it. So I used the Logitech one for that. That kind of sucks, but I mean, I d I said okay, I'd use it, so I can't really use that as an excuse against Mask. Um, but yeah, I mean, yeah, it, it did trouble me, but it is what it is. You know? Yeah. What about the games themselves? How do you feel about the actual games? Um, uh, <laughs> I'm pretty disappointed with them. Uh, like, okay, I'll go over the the two series that were big, which was the the series against um, Silver and the series against Mass. Against Silver, I won the first game straight, like outright. It was very very decisive. The second game, ahead by a lot, a lot, a lot, a lot. Um, I was, it was two base to one base, and basically I said to myself, I don't want to look silly in this position. So what I did was, I just made sure that nothing could happen to me ever, right? And how Mask, or not Mask, how um, Silver played it was, I'm so far behind, I need to double expand. Well, when you collide those two together, what you get actually is, um, and there's a certain stage where the three base will equate to the two base that I have. And I waited too long. There was a huge timing where I could have done anything. And I waited too long, and that's what screwed me. So that happened second game, and I was just destroyed by it. So I went into third game, and I was, I'm a very emotional player too. And I was, I was just frazzled by that game too. I could not believe that I lost it. And in game three, what happened was... There, the same thing happened. I was ahead from a, I had a two base up when he only had one. He had to double expand on Metalopolis. And I knew what he did, so instead I went like seven or eight racks off of two base, which is really, really um, all in ish. But because I had the power so early and the production capacity so early, there's no way that he was going to be able to match my army and the, the reinforcements. So what I did. I dropped the main and it baits all of his units up and then I was going to come up and down from the bottom and kill his third and then I would be ahead in units and I would be ahead you know, uh, and we would equate in, in um, what's it called? Income. No, yeah, income. So that was my plan. Unfortunately, I, I just lost, I don't know what happened but I, I, I went to go drop the top and then I told all my units to go down. Now, Metalopolis, there's two directions. My army decides to do this, right? And h half of it went down below, half of it went the other way. And this other way I know is on move command. And this one just went up to the, 
the, the third. Killed it all, but I lost all that army. So basically, I'm down in army. And then he was able to just clean up, and I didn't kill the third. And that was the game loser, basically. You know, I was so far behind at that point because I didn't go for upgrades, and I didn't tech any farther. So I'm really committed to Marine Marauder for a very long time. You can't really go siege tanks because there's so much space that you have to get to um, to to acquire that it, it really sets you back if you go siege tanks. Silver would have just taken fourth and fifth expansions and it would have been a disaster. So yeah, I blundered on that and it was just the most depressing thing, you know, because it wasn't even he was beating me. It was both those times I was uh, I beat myself. Yeah. The games against Mask, um, I just need to I need to learn to play against all in players a lot more. I mean, at, to some degree, it's also I have to just start like getting better at not being so confident with myself because if I get an advantage, I become very confident in my play, and then I assume too much of my my advantage. So, you know, I mean, the games from against Mask, I was extremely disappointed with. Uh, I, I didn't think I made the best showing with my TBT. Uh, I was really actually disappointed with it because I know I have so much more capacity to do so much better. You know, I played all these people, TBT, QXC, Kathan Luck, um, uh, Kawhi Rice, you know, I, I played all the, well, Kawhi Rice was here, but all the Terrans that were here, even Silver, I have extremely high win ratios against them in Ladder. And of course Ladder doesn't mean anything, but historically, like, I've always had their number. So to lose to them was very, very disappointing to me. So what do you think you can take from the experience? How do you think you're going to use it to help you do better in the future? Well, I know exactly... It's a good thing I know exactly what I have to work on. Um, it's my mid-game development. Uh, I know I have to... I have to start thinking about the game much differently in Terran versus Terran. Their defensive posture is just way too strong. Uh, for me, well, it's not too strong, but it is stronger than the other races. So it's not really I can I can capitalize if I have an early game lead. I can't capitalize off of that in material too fast. So what I have to actually go for is more economic leads and wait until the higher techs to give me the decisive advantages rather than than um, than just like banking on marine marauder because that that's very flimsy at a, at a point. You know, you need a lot of support units, like medevacs and vikings, and it just becomes a hassle going into mid-end game. So, that's the biggest thing I probably took away, because I played mostly TVTs. Yep, so MLG DC is coming up pretty much next month. You are going to be playing in that? No, I'm going to be destroying in that. I'm going <laughs> there, there is no reason why I shouldn't get first in that. Uh, I'm more than confident that I will. Um, I know I said that for, for this one too, but the things I walked away with from this is, I mean, there's so many things I could talk about what I walked away with, but there's no reason why I shouldn't be able to play higher than everybody that has just played. Like, when I was watching people play, I analyzed everything about them, uh, especially like the top tiers. Like, I was watching Huck a lot, and I was just analyzing exactly what I would do. Even though he didn't play PDTs, it's like, you still carry over the same subtleties to other matchups. So I really can't wait to play these players because I really think I have the capacity to be the best in North America. That's pretty good. Hopefully we will be seeing you destroy MLG and DC. What about other LAN events coming up? I know you didn't qualify for um, IEM. There's rumor that BlizzCon will either be invite or have uh, qualified from ladder, do you think that you'd be able to snag a spot there? Or what What else do you look forward to playing in in the coming yeah, few I mean, months? I definitely have to ladder a lot more. It's it's kind of hard with my time restrictions from work, but um, I definitely, I'm going to be laddering as much as possible. I mean, right now, I didn't know, I was actually 1,200 points. I, I don't really check coins, but 1,200 points right now, and I haven't played nearly as many games as anybody. I'm probably like in that list of like a thousand plus, I'm probably like a hundred games short compared to everybody else. So I mean, I have so much room to, you know, to be up there at so little games is. Yeah. It just was means I have room to grow in terms of point capacity. Yeah. Was there anybody whose play impressed you this weekend? Sock. 
Sock. Unbelievable player. Unbelievable player. Uh, probably the most dynamic, the, the smartest PVT I've ever played before. I mean, he plays PVT like I have imagined a, a strong Protoss should play. And I really think if you want to become a good Protoss player, definitely look at his PVT because it really showcases how you can play um, just very dynamically and how it should be played. I mean, like, of course, he, he could have been playing better, but he is probably the most impressive player here at MLG. What do you think about the two Europeans? I know Sok is one of them and um, Sho? Shao? What do you think about two European players coming and placing one's, you know, third and fifth in a tournament of 64 Americans? Do you think that says anything about about Europe versus the U.S. scene? Uh, no, not necessarily, because uh, look at it this way. I mean, if we're taking a, a, if we're taking a simple random sample of, that is, any European coming over and then placing, then yes, we'd have a problem, you know. But Sock and Shao... Top three in each. The, yeah, they are not like chumps. They're not like players that you're like, oh, let's just pick you know a random European up and and send them to MLG. No, they're very strong players, you know. And so for them to place top, uh, I'm not surprised really. And of course, you can't really judge a person's skill on a, a best of three series. You know, I mean, it, you can, but. It's not the most accurate discriminator, and also brackets have a lot to do with how far you place. There's all these things that could have happened. Um, because, you know, I was playing with Sock earlier, and we had some very, very good matches. And if I was paired with him first, things might be different, you know? I'm not saying that I would have won, or I'm not saying, you know, I would have lost, but it, it's just like things could be drastically different depending on the bracket style. And, you know, it, it, yeah, it, they did place very high, but it's not the most accurate discriminator that Europeans are superior to North Americans or vice versa. It just means that it is that this time around. What do you think about the European players in general coming over to play in American events? And, you know, Americans like, you know, Hydra played in the IEM in Europe, Artosis played in it, Huck went to Europe to play. How do you feel about, you know, players you know, crossing countries to play in, in other events. Do you think that's good good for yeah, esports? Absolutely wonderful for esports, for just the community. It, it's awesome because not only is it that, you know, is it another player coming over and, you know, um, and generally if you're very, if you're doing that, you're going to be a very good player, but also it. It shows us new styles that we're not necessarily used to. I mean, North America has definitely has its own style, and it's much different than European, which is much different than Asia. So just to see those styles in action and to actually analyze a player like soccer, like Shao, um, it really helps. But well, me as a player, you know. And also, it's like it's awesome. I mean, it's so cool. Like, you know, you meet this German sock, you know. And I, I, I'm pretty sure the uh, Shao is Swiss. Swedish. Sweet. Oh, Swedish, I'm sorry. Um, so, I mean, it, it's great that we get to meet people all around the world. So, mm -hmm. I mean, I think it's wonderful. All right. Any last words or anything? Last words. Well, Mr. Uh, Andre. Thank you, fans. You know, all for a fan. Thank you. Uh, no, I'm kidding. Of course, everybody loves me. Um, no, uh, thank you guys so much. Because, I mean, like, I, I read forums and, you know, I, I see a lot yeah, of Yeah, we know you read forums. <laughs> <laughs> a lot of people support me, and I really appreciate it. Um, thank you to, you know, Fanatic, of course. Uh, they've helped me so much. They've really developed me into a, a really strong player, I think. And I, I couldn't do it without them. Uh, and, of course, Fanatic sponsors, thank you so much for, for, um, for supporting me as well. Sponsors, please go check them out because they're awesome. They're um, U Game, Bigfoot, Slappa, MSI, and Steel Series. Um, just so such generous sponsors. You know they're they're really really great to us. And uh, of course, thank you, Zaries and TT One over there. Mm -hmm. You guys have rocked my socks. You know. It, yeah. There's a there's been a lot of bromance going on here. You know? <laughs> bromance. Rass, what's up?
I am. Get over here. What? Give me a hug, baby. <laughs> and you know, it's it's been awesome with these guys. I mean, um, Pyme and me, we met for the first time. We hit it off so well. Zarius, this hasn't been the first time, but you know, it's like long overdue that we see each other. Yep. I'll see you again soon. See you later. I'm good.